guys, what's up? It's Big Check Films here, and welcome back to the Inuyasha Vlogs. And we've got another two-parter that surprisingly is better than the last one. Not as good as the first one, but at the same time, it's a pretty dark and fucked up violent uh, set of episodes. Holy crap. Um, this one, um, I forget. I, can't, I keep forgetting these arcs. I don't have them off the top of my head. But basically, this arc once again deals with Inuyasha's full demon power when he loses Tetsuya. So we open with Sashomaru uh, walking around, and he finds this magic tree, this six thousand year old tree, as old as the um, probably actually older than the uh, sacred tree uh, Kagome Shrine. And this tree can obviously talk. So you know, a tree had a, a shepherd of the forest. Don't talk to it, Maddie. Don't encourage it. You know, like, I see this tree, and I'm like, I just want him to say, Tree beard, son, call me. <laughs> it's so funny, because what is it about fantasies and talking trees? I, I don't get it. Like, Wizard of Oz, Lord of the Rings, and now Inuyasha. Like, it, I just, I don't understand it. So, the tree is actually the wood that was used to create the sheaths for Tetsaiga and Tensega. And tells Sushomaru if Inuyasha loses Tetsaiga and lets the demon blood flow through his veins, it will take his soul and he will continue to fight and kill until he is dead. So he basically becomes a, a demon terminator. So that's enlightening. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the group basically are on along on their journey and they come across a little boy named Little Boy and his grandpa named grandpa and basically uh helped them out in a skit and literally the grandpa goes i fall and i can't get up it's like dude you need a life alert so basically that that they let them do their thing they um help them out and then go home but then the little boy comes back with an arrow in his fucking in his fucking back so it's like this kid's dead um not really he's actually minorly injured but at first i'm like holy shit that kid's dead he had an arrow through his fucking back um, but no, it turns out the village is then attacked by bandits, and some pretty fucked up bandits, with a leader, who of course is a demon, uh, basically traps Inuyasha and Moroku in this big wall of webbing, and he is a moth demon. And what's really great about this demon, like, he's a pretty intimidating villain, uh, he mocks our heroes, and then he also uses human shields and does terrible things to them, in some areas, pretty uh, explicit uh, to break them, essentially. It's pretty fucked up. It's like a Negan from The Walking Dead. But basically, it's funny, because like this bandit moth demon thing, not only a precursor to the movie, which will be coming up soon, by the way, um, but also is essentially kind of reminding me of, like, the Joker. Um, Joker in terms of, like, Batman Ninja Joker. And he has the look of, like, the Joker from Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns, which I thought was kind of interesting. I mean, this is technically done by Warner Brothers. And plus, I heard something about Inuyasha is going to be leaving Netflix and going to HBO Max. If somebody can let me know in the comments, that'd be great, because I heard HBO Max, they're going to be putting in a bit of anime. And if Inuyasha's on there, perfect. Another reason for me to subscribe, aside from the upcoming Snyder Cut of Justice League, which... By the way, I've been in, I watched Batman v Superman again, and I'm sorry, I'm just adjusting my goddamn kimono. I watched Batman v Superman again, and I kind of liked it. Um, but that's another story. Anyway, so Inuyasha doesn't have a sword, and this Joker demon motherfucker wants the sword, can't get it, and continues to fuck with him uh, to get his attention. You know, even going to the point of, like, doing some pretty... Doing some shit to some pretty ladies. He does that thing that Charlie Theron does in Snow White and the Huntsman. Sucks the souls out of them until their bodies are just crisp dry. And it makes Inuyasha really pissed off, even to the point where, like, he, the moth guy put powder in his wound, and it's, like, eating the ass, it's all gross and shit. But Inuyasha eventually snaps and becomes his full demon form, and basically kills everyone at this village. Like, Inuyasha straight up murdered people, like, massacre, with his own claws. He was slicing people down like Wolverine on a field day. Um... It is violent, it is graphic, there is blood everywhere. And as that's going on, then we have Sashamaru showing up to see if the, the rumors that the tree said were true, and basically has Inuyasha attacked him. He pulls out fucking Tokijin, and, you know, like, here, I'll just pull out Tokijin, because why the fuck not, and there goes Kagome's bow. Pulls out fucking Tokijin, points it at Inuyasha, and it's kind of say, bow, kneel, you little fucker. Inuyasha! 
punches Toki Chin in the fucking tip, but it causes his whole arm to just bleed out like fucking like a, on razor blades and shit. It is like bloody as hell. So you know they basically, Sushomaru basically has him pinned to the ground, and Kagome thinks, no, don't kill him, right? Like he thinks Sushomaru's just trying to kill him, but Sushomaru's like, nah, you know what? I'll kill him when I- I will kill him! Don't worry, I will kill my own brother, but you know what? I'm saving it for a good day. Not today. I just wanted to- I was just curious to see what the fuck his problem was. So, toodaloo! <laughs> he just takes off, and, you know, leaving Inuyasha in the group pretty dumbed down. Inuyasha's back to his normal self, but he realizes he sees the blood in his hands, and he's just- He's having total, like, PTSD trauma. Like, he's having trauma, he realized, fuck, I killed people! Cut to a scene that's really emotional. Again, one of the highlights of, of season two. Like, again, the animation here, especially in part two, is spectacular. You have Kagome going to check on Inuyasha, and Inuyasha's just flanteling, trying to get the scrub the blood out of his goddamn hands. And it's like, he's like Tarzan trying to put the, the ape stuff in the water. Like, he is flipping out trying to get this off him. You could, and this is a, an example where the animation is so good, you could feel his trauma. And it's not just from him, it's from, you know, the uh, Richard Ian Cox does such a good job uh, doing the scene. He's like, damn, I can't get the fucking blood off me, it's disgusting! Like, you feel his trauma, and it ends with him and Kagome sitting down and saying, you know, careful, Kagome, I could kill you, you don't have to stay with me. But she's so persistent in staying with him because she loves him. And it ends on kind of a sweet note where... All the groups say, even Sango's like, you know, I'm staying with Inuyasha because y'all helped me when I was in a pickle with Kohaku, so if I weren't to do the same, I'd feel like shit. So it's a big kind of a fellowship moment, you know, you just want to play at the end. Da, 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 da. Like, it's, it's one of those, like, kind of fellowship moments where the group decides, let's all work together. So... I like this uh, two-parter, although I'm a fan of part two more than part one. It's not like an arc where, you know, you have both of them as one consistent story. They are a consistent story, but this one, I felt part two was stronger than part one. Part one dragged a little bit, but part two was really picking up speed at that point, and it is a violent episode. It is a dark episode. We have Inuyasha at his lowest point, literally killing people. Uh, even, like, humans. It's not just demons. He's killing humans. He's slaughtering them. And you see the trauma that leaves for him, which will eventually pick up in the next episode, in the next two-parter, which is actually the season finale. So, I really enjoyed this. The animation's great. Uh, the acting, once again, is fantastic. Um, and I, I thought this was a, a decent sit. So I'd give this one um, probably about a 7.5 out of 10. It's a decent one. One of the darker episodes, one of the most violent episodes. And if you're a fan of Dark, Full Demon Inuyasha, you'll love this one. It's it's a great set. So I overall had a really good time, and I cannot wait till next week for the season finale. So, again, thank you all so much for watching this Inuyasha vlog. Of course, these are Patreon exclusives. So if you want to go support our channel, just a dollar more will get you early access to all of our content, as well as other special features, and all the money will be going towards a potential Inuyasha fan film. So, other than that, let me know what your thoughts are in this uh, arc in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell, and just enjoy our videos, you know? We do other than Inuyasha vlogs, we do other things, other reviews. We got a review of Legend coming up, Ridley Scott's Legend, which is an amazing film, by the way. And join us next week when we take a look at the season finale. This is see the season two finale, and unfortunately for people on Netflix, it's the last of this, it's the final two episodes of the show, unless you get the DVDs, which thankfully we have. We will continue on with season three at some point. So until the next video, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off saying, if your sibling's acting having a violent meltdown, just cut him with a fucking sword.